Hi there. I have a thought for for today, and this comes from the book Living Without a Goal, and it's by James Ogilvy, and he's writing in this little section about Howard Hughes. So this is about Hughes. We don't have much evidence of any spiritual practice on Howard Hughes' part, but here we might be deceived. Note the uncanny similarity between the details of Hughes' terminal condition and that of some Oriental holy men and mystics. He chose hermitage. He constructed his own secular monastery. He abstained from most foods and became barely more than a bag of skin and bones. He was unattached to personal possessions. He wore only the lightest and softest of clothes. He spent long hours in solitary worship of certain idols. Only in place of the Buddha, he contemplated his movie, Ice Station Zebra, which he watched some 150 times, kind of like an extended mantra. Like some of the holy men, he never cut his fingernails. His last years of life might have been very like those of the sages of old. Of course, we could dismiss Hughes as simply crazy. But then we would have to entertain the insanity of the sages. We know he took to repeating certain phrases over and over again, and that's a recognized symptom of obsessive compulsives. But don't the sages repeat their mantras over and over again? Whether sane or crazy or both, there's no denying certain similarities between Hughes and the sages. So imagine a monologue of Howard Hughes' Reflections. Imagine the wizened Howard Hughes, thin and smiling to himself as he writes, quote, Here, all the while, you thought you were an individual, but to your surprise, you find that you are the eyes of God. You thought you were just an individual. But all the while, your conscious mind, your individual mind, was completely unaware of all the glories and sins of the world that you were dragging along in your life stream. You thought you were alone, and then you discovered, when you looked into the mirror of the cosmos, that standing behind you, attached to you, forming the back of your head, as it were, were all the pain and suffering, all the brilliance, all the laws of nature, all the trivialities and contingencies that fill in the cracks in the world. You thought you were alone. And once you stared into the mirror of the entire cosmos, you saw that there behind you Attached to you, as part of you, were all the souls that ever drew a breath and lived and died. All the living creatures, large and small. You thought you were just an individual. And once you stared into your image in the mirror of the cosmos, you discovered that there is no individuality. That individuality is an illusion, a dream induced by the sleep of ordinary wakefulness. You thought you were an individual, but then you discovered that all your thoughts were spun on a web that extends into infinity through all the words in all the languages that were ever spoken or written or sung. You thought you were set apart. And then you discovered that every movement you make, 
obeys all the physical laws that every other action and every other event obeys in the very same way. And you felt the harmony that all of that brought. You thought you were an individual, but then you discovered that the boundaries of your individuality were membranes so thin, so ephemeral, that your new vision of oneness blasted them away, flying like pieces of sheet metal off those planes you crashed. You know what happens when those Mormons let the film projector stop, but the lamp stays on. The image on the screen stops. And then the heat of the projector lamp starts to burn the film. It starts at the center, and then the hole gets bigger as the celluloid incinerates under the heat of the lamp. Finally, the screen goes all white. That's what it's like when the boundaries of the self are burned away. A white light floods your mind, and you are left gawking at the sky. But the differences return. The damn Mormons wake up, splice the film, and rethread the projector. Things come into focus again. After seeing the unity of all things, all of the same old things are still there. The trash and the suffering, airplanes and operas, spoons and elephants. Nothing disappears and nothing changes. But your experience of the whole and your place in it is different. You are connected. You are not just you in the way you used to understand yourself. Instead, you know that your ordinary waking mind is just the growing tip of a history that includes far more than you will ever consciously remember. You know that when you touch another human being, it's like one part of the whole touching another. Cosmic narcissism. When you finally wake up and see the extent of your connectedness, you will feel an immense peace. After all, how could you ever fall through this immense net when you are part of that very net? But this peace will not last, for soon you will realize that part of what this net of relationships contains is pain as well as pleasure, suffering as well as delight, and that the narrow part of the whole that resides in the body with your name on it can as well find itself in the pits as well as the heights. Enlightenment will not keep you from crashing if you don't fly right. So in one sense, nothing changes. The laws of nature remain the same. The rules of grammar remain the same. All the history that has ever happened remains the same. But at the same time, everything is different. You are no longer alone, despite the fact that your body will age and die independently from all other bodies. You are no longer alone, despite the fact that no one else will pay your income taxes for you. You are no longer alone, despite the fact that some of your secrets are yours alone. The day-to-day -day trappings of individuality will continue untouched, and your powers of vision will not burn through walls. Your biceps will not be any bigger, and your memory for names will not necessarily be any better. But once you have experienced your relatedness to all things, 
you may become just a little more graceful. You may breathe just a little more deeply. And you may get fewer colds. Yes, there are psychosomatic effects associated with the peace that passeth all understanding. But they do not extend to leaping tall buildings in a single bound. So what was Howard Hughes saying here? He was sharing a kundalini type moment, a full awakening to the cosmos. Everything goes white. You're left gawking at what looks like a sky with billions of little twinkling lights in it. As you go through your day, think about what Howard Hughes is saying here. He's talking about enlightenment, about waking up to the self and the realization that you are made of God's stuff. Everything changes in terms of perception, and yet the laws of reality remain in place. Lots and lots of people that I have known and talked to who have had this type of awakening all say the same thing. They all say that nothing has changed. Nothing is the same. Everything is different somehow. So the question to ask ourselves is, why do those who experience that moment of kundalini, that oneness, that connection to all that is, to God, to source, to whatever you want to call it, they all have a change, a huge change in perception. Is that because the next stage of development, once you make that connection, is the development of perception and consciousness. Once you move past thinking materiality is all there is, you are faced with your consciousness. Are we facing this because we have the potential to move beyond materiality without giving up everything materiality offers? I think we do. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>